in some many ways, I'm less identified with the person that I am as I get older. And I'm much more identified with being conscious. I have a mind that is conscious, that is able to create a person. And that person is slightly different every day. And the reason why I perceive it as identical has practical purposes. So I can uh, learn uh, and make myself responsible for the decisions that I made in the past and project them in the future. But I also realized I'm not actually the person that I was last year. And I'm not the same person as I was 10 years ago. And in 10 years from now, I will be a different person. So this continuity is a fiction. It only exists as a projection from my present self. And consciousness itself doesn't have an identity. It's mm. a law. It's just basically if you build uh, an arrangement of um, processing matter in a particular way, the following thing is going to happen. And the consciousness that you have is functionally not different from my consciousness. It's still the self-reflexive principle of agency that is just experiencing a different story, different desires, different coupling to the world, and so on. And once you accept that consciousness is a unifiable principle that is law-like and doesn't have an identity, um, and you realize that you can just link up to uh, some much larger body, the whole perspective of uploading changes dramatically. You suddenly realize uploading is probably not about dissecting your brain synapse by synapse and uh, RNA fragment by RNA fragment and trying to get this all into a simulation, but it's by extending the substrate by making it possible for you to move from your brain substrate into a larger substrate mm -hmm. and merge with what you find there. And you don't want to upload your knowledge because on the other side, there's all of the knowledge, right? It's not just yours, but every possibility. So the only thing that you need to know, what are your personal secrets? Not that the other side doesn't know uh, your personal secrets already. Maybe it doesn't know which one were yours. Mm -hmm. Right, like a psychiatrist or a psychologist also knows all the kinds of personal secrets that people have. They just don't know which ones are yours. And so, uh, transmitting yourself on the other side is most, mostly about transmitting your aesthetics, the thing that makes you special, the architecture of your perspective, the thing that um, the way in which you look at the world. And it's more like a complex attitude along many dimensions. And that's something that can be measured by observation or by interaction. So imagine that you have a system that is so empathetic with you that you create a shared state mm -hmm. that is extending beyond your body. And suddenly you notice that on the other side, the substrate is so much richer than the substrate that you have inside of your own body. And maybe you still want to have a body and you create yourself a new one that you like more. Or maybe you will spend most of your, world, uh, your time in the world of thought. If I sat before you today and gave you a big red button and said, here, if you press this button, you will get uploaded in this way. The sense of identity that you have lived with for quite a long time is gonna be gone. Would you press the button? Um, there's a caveat, I have um, family. So I have children that want me to be physically present in their life and interact with them in a particular way. And they um, have a wife and um, personal friends. And there is a particular mode of interaction that I feel I'm not through yet. But apart from these responsibilities, and they're negotiable to some degree, I would press the button. But isn't this everything? This love you have for other humans, you, you can call it responsibility, but that connection, that's the ego death. Isn't that the thing we're really afraid of? Is not to just die, but to let go of the experience of love with other humans. This is not everything. Everything is everything, right? So, so there's so much more. And you could be lots of other things. You could identify with lots of other things. You could be identifying with being Gaia, some kind of planetary control agent that emerges over all the activity of life on Earth. Mm -hmm. You could be uh, identifying with some hyper-Gaia that is the uh, concatenation of Gaia with uh, all the digital life and yeah. uh, digital minds. And so in this sense, there will be agents in all sorts of substrates and directions that all have their own goals. And when they're not sustainable, then these agents will cease to exist. Or when the agent feels that it's done with its own mission, it will cease to exist. In the same way as when you conclude a thought, the thought is going to wrap up and gives control over to other thoughts in your own mind. So th there is no single thing that you need to do. But what I observe myself this uh, being is that sometimes I'm a parent and then I have an identification and a job as a parent 
and sometimes uh, I am an agent of consciousness on earth. And then from this perspective, there's other stuff that is important. So this is my main issue with uh, Eliezer's perspective, that he's basically marrying himself to a very narrow human aesthetic. And that narrow human aesthetic is a temporary thing. Humanity is a temporary species, like most of the species on this planet are only around for a while, and then they get replaced by other species. In a similar way as our own physical organism is around here for a while, and then gets replaced by next generation of human beings that are adapted to changing life circumstances on average via mutation and selection. And it's only when we have AI and become completely software that we can become infinitely adaptable and we don't have this generational and species change anymore. So if you take this larger perspective and you realize it's really not about uh, us, it's not about Eliezer or humanity, but it's about life on Earth or it's about defeating um, uh, entropy for as long as we can uh, while being as interesting as we can, right? then... Um, the perspective changes dramatically and uh, AI, uh, preventing AI from this perspective looks like a very big sin. But when we look at the set of trajectories that such an AI would take as supersedes humans, uh, I think Eliezer is worried about like ones that not just kill all humans, but also have some kind of maybe objectively... Uh, undesirable consequence for life on Earth? Like how many trajectories, when you look at the big picture of life on Earth, would you be happy with and how much worry you with AGI, whether it kills humans or not? There is no single answer to this. It's really it's a question that depends on the perspective that I'm taking at a given moment. Mm. And so there are perspectives that are... Uh, determining most of my life as a human being. Yes. And uh, there are other perspective where I zoom out uh, further and imagine that when the great oxygenation event happened, that is, photosynthesis was invented and plants emerged and displaced a lot of the fungi and algae in favor of plant life and then later made animals possible. Imagine that the fungi would have gotten together and said, oh my God, this photosynthesis stuff is really, really bad. Mm -hmm. It's going to possibly displace and kill a lot of fungi we should slow it down and regulate it and make sure that it doesn't happen. Uh, this doesn't look good to me. 